let's start at the beginning. Now, my videos are long, and they are maybe boring, but maybe you'll learn something from them, from what I've learned. This was a book called Two-Stroke Tuning Handbook by Gordon Jennings. Fundamentals of Crank Train, Crankshaft Pumping, Carburation Ignition. What this does is explain in very simple terms how a two-stroke engine or racing engine works. This book cost me a hundred dollars and like I said you can probably download it. If you don't understand two strokes, racing two strokes, this is a book for you. This was put out in 1973 and it cost a total of five dollars but it is the bible of two-stroke tuning and you can see how the pages are all yellowed because it's so old it was put out in 1973 I won't go through all of it but what we have is um, the fundamentals predicting power piston speed Piston acceleration, cylinder heads, expansion chambers like I have, like my FYSIS pipe, port timing. Now, if you look at the port timing right here, they talk about a specific port timing, angle area. They don't talk about mean port timing. That is where the Japanese come in. And they say, well, the Japanese didn't develop this. Well, I'll tell you what, the Japanese developed something because of Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki. All of their racing bikes that were two strokes that they've made millions and millions of. Well, a Japanese engineer figured all this out. Crankcase resonant effects, volume, reed valves, rotary valve, which is um, prevalent in go-karts. But as we look at this in, it's hard for me to do this one, with one hand because my hands are shot. <clears throat> we have a plan Brake horsepower, that's what BPH means, is brake horsepower. Brake horsepower means basically what, um, how much power you have to the rear wheel. Not how much the engine might create, not how much um, uh, you can dream up. This is what actual horsepower is to the two rear wheels to a car. It means this is where the rubber meets the road. It's not what some engineers will put down and tell you that you might have. Damn it. <clears throat> we have piston acceleration. And of course, if you look up here, you'll see where a lot of these equations are. Think about it in 1973, there were no computers. Okay, you had to figure all this math out like Einstein did. And I learned a lot from these books, like normal gas pressure. Let me move my hand, it's cramping on me. <coughs> Excuse me. This right here is a piston and a piston ring, okay? Now, a lot of people think that, against the cylinder wall right here, that a piston ring is held to the piston wall by tension, which is a bunch of bullshit. And I, I did not know this at the time. 
But what happens is this, and a lot of people have pistons that rings that stick, is where the piston gases come down along the cylinder wall, they go to the back of the piston ring right here and push it against the wall during the detonation or explosion. That's what it does. And a lot of people told me I'm crazy, but that is exactly what it does. That is why piston rings are free floating and these are some of the thicknesses of the rings. These are two stroke tuner fundamentals. Remember, when we can understand and completely uh, master a, a physics or a thing, we can control it. But if you don't, then you don't have all the power. Here's your piston ring. Here's your piston cylinder wall right here. These are, they're explaining um, Dyke's pattern rings, which we don't use. But it explains how the Dyke's patterns rings are affected in a piston compared to other inertia effects. And then, of course, we have um, timing and other things that about intake duration and crankshaft speed and all these things. I really don't. I mean, it's beyond me. Okay, and you look here, and it's it's such a great book, motorcycle tuning for performance. All of these bikes are from 1972 or 73. And they have maybe, you know, five inches of travel. And they're a 1974 Honda um, CR125 that was silver and green. And the list price was $695. Then they talk about the cam and taker, taper of rings. The um, stock pistons that cope with expansion and how the pistons are not generally round. They're a, a bit egg-shaped and that is because of when they're heated up they become more round. Also the s exhaust side of the piston is a little bit more well built to deal with um, the exhaust heat. And you, you know, we'll go into piston rings and I don't know what the hell that is, but they talk about the connecting rod swivel and how that. This is the problem that I uh, that I come against when I need an anti-aircraft gun because that airplane is fucking with my video. You asshole. Anyway, every time I make a video, there's a airplane. Anyway, with a larger diameter between here and here crankshaft, that means that it is going to pull the, the connecting rod farther down. This is what I was talking about, where the piston has got to be cut. Off-road travel tips from 19 what 73, and I don't know what that is. But then we go into cylinder heads. We talk about the combustion process. We talk about cylinder heads. We talk about spark advance, 
And then we get into the math of relationship formulated between pressure and temperature. Now here is something I want to show a friend of mine named Frankie. Okay, and this is a problem I ran against. Excuse me, I've got to uh, 